In the big league type was winning in 75 and 76 World Series. We had minor league teams winning also, which gets back to the scouting thing about, well, how come you got so many good players? Where do you suppose they come from? Our, our good scouting system was putting players into our system that we had stronger players in our whole system than most organizations did. But one of the most unique things I think that happened is in 1975, we won the World Series. And in our winter meetings, in organizational meetings, Mr. Housem, which proves how proactive a thinker he is, he said, now that we are world champions, other teams are going to watch everything that we do and try to steal that stuff. And by the time they steal those things, we need to be on another page. So the stuff that worked for us to become world champions in 75 is not the things we'll be doing in 76. And that's up to you scouts and you development people to come up with new ideas to put us on a different platform and be proactive in our thinking. Which I think is why we were so successful. We not only had good players, but we were always looking for new ideas. He would call me as a manager sometime during the season and say, tell me about your club. And I'd have a roster right by my phone. And I'd go over every kid on my club and he'd say, now tell me about the top 10 prospects in the, org in the league that you're managing in and include our players in that and tell me who the top prospect is, including our players. And the second, and a lot of times we'd have four or five of the top 10 players, in my opinion, in the league were our kids. That's why we were winning. And in 75, when we won at the major league level and won the World Series, our team in Eugene, which half the kids in this room were on, were called the Little Red Wagon. And I can't remember, George could probably tell. We started off, I don't know, with a losing record for 10 or 12 games. 500 and then we went 56 and 24. But a whole bunch of those kids off that team made it to at least AAA and several made it to the major leagues. And that was the bottom level. In fact, Paul Moscow was our leading pitcher. And he was an NAIA designated hitter All-American in college at Pacifica or Azusa, no, this Azusa is Pacific. Pacific. Yeah. So the first time he comes up in Billings, he was there for a cup of coffee and then they brought him up. And we, I think we played a double header against Seattle and I pinch hit him in the first game, he had a home run up on the highway that's probably still on radar. And then in the second game, Lynn Jones, who had just come up, he had a home run to win the game. And that was kind of the beginning of when we took off in this, this streak that we ran away basically with the league. But it was fun. And when you're doing that stuff, you can have a lot of fun. You can do some things maybe you couldn't normally do. But when you form a chemistry, the reason that we're here today and all these people have shown up is it was the greatest year of my career, barring nothing, barring the major leagues or anything else. It was the greatest year of my career. And it's not because of just the winning. It's the chemistry of the people. And they were back celebrating why the Reds were so successful. It was because of the kind of people that they signed. And we didn't sign bad kids. They researched that thing. <laughs> I mean, you might have been the only exception to the rule, but still. <laughs>
But a lot of people didn't do that stuff. And that's the kind of little things that separated our kids and gave them a better chance is when they got a chance to learn it to what the Red's way is versus what Paul's way is or George's way is or Rid's way. And that created better learning when they could do that. And we, that separated us from the other teams. Well, to me, one of the biggest things that if a guy has tools, makeup really enters into it. Makeup is when you see a guy actually competing in the game, you'll see a guy maybe, I always like to see if a guy gets in trouble or something, if he can reach back and get a little bit more, or he's a battler. In other words, he's a gamer. He goes, that, to me, that's makeup. A guy that gets, that toughens up when things get going bad. And, you know, a guy that, in other words, a good competitor. I've seen a lot of guys that maybe didn't, have, were short of tools, but they were a gamer. They played hard, they hustled and stuff, and sometimes they end up getting the big leagues. And I've seen a lot of guys with great tools that never worked at it and thought they, they had it made. And like I always say, when a guy's taken in the, in the high rounds, he thinks it's real easy because here I am, a high, I'm going to just go out and uh, in two or three years, I mean, it doesn't work that way. In fact, a lot of guys, what they do is they think it's uh, easy, but you got to work at it. I've seen the guys with less tools that put in a lot of work. The last guy that I ever signed is... Uh, like Barry Moss? Yeah, Barry, a, a guy named Brady Clark. Maybe you guys don't know who he was. He's about the last guy that I ever signed. Well, I'm just saying about a guy with great makeup. He was a gamer. Well, for me, as a manager, the key to being successful as a manager is knowing exactly what kinds of things make your player go. Scott Brown was one of the guys we had in Eugene. No, they motivate themselves. But I, I need to know what makes him go. I need to know when he needs to be pushed. I need to know somet sometimes you push guys and they fold up the tent, so you can't push this guy because of that part of his personality. And this guy, sometimes you have to jab him in the butt to get him to go, so that's what you do to get him to go. But every single player on the team is different than the next player. You, you kind of got to be like a psychiatrist and figure everybody out. Mm -hmm.